How to dress for a wedding as a guest? This question isn't so obvious because wedding guides aim that men usually focus on the groom's attire. But guests are subject to slightly different rules. Do you know how to present yourself in the best light? Poorly chosen attire for a guest can be perceived as a lack of respect for the young couple and their closest ones. Even if you think it's not very important, remember that for someone, it may matter whether you made an effort to look elegant and proper. A great appearance is really within reach. Having been to several weddings, I've noticed that unfortunately, most guests don't know how to dress properly for this event. Many of them desperately want to use tricks to reduce the formality of the whole outfit. They act as if they were afraid of looking too elegant. The reason may be the fact that most people feel uncomfortable in elegant attire. In many cases, men even, when they decide to buy a suit, choose the one that has no standard finishes and extravagant patterns or it's made of shiny material. If you're looking for wedding planning advice, you will find it in this video. Opt for classic attire. The rules of men's attire clearly define what is appropriate for formal occasions and what is not. But uh, you don't have to be an expert. Someone in the store will advise you, right? Well, not exactly. Salespeople in most stores lack sufficient knowledge and simply recommend what they think looks cool. Meanwhile, there are plenty of mistakes to be made. I will skip the worst fashion disasters like jackets with five buttons done up to the neck or suits with contrasting pipping. But even things that are okay on their own may be inappropriate for a wedding. For example, a black suit which is only suitable for funerals and evening occasions. And yet weddings almost always takes place during the day and have nothing to do with the morning. As uh, for shoes, less formal derbies in a light color, example cognac, are also not suitable. Tie pocket squares, sets made of the same material, material and in the same color are disastrous. It's a shortcut that also has no justification in the tradition of formal attire. With basic knowledge, you can go to the store with clearly defined needs and not let yourself be persuaded into buying something ugly that could only ruin your image. A two-piece suit for a wedding. A good choice for a wedding and reception is a classic two-piece suit. It's best to choose dark navy, charcoal or graphite. As I mentioned before, forget about black. Also, don't risk wearing a tuxedo or tails, as you might end up being more formally dressed than the groom. He and his bride should be the center of attention. You don't want someone to mistake you for the groom, do you? How should your suit look more specifically. It's best if the jacket has two buttons, like a standard, and standard labels. Sharp labels can also be considered, but remember that in such a suit you might look more elegant than the groom. For the same reason, let's skip the double-breasted suit, considered more formal than the single-breasted one. Interestingly, some recommend choosing a checkered jacket. I can't agree with that. Smooth fabric always reigns at formal events, such as wool. Trousers, which are part of the suit, cannot have any pockets, or at least any visible ones. Forget about casual style suits where the trousers look like those for, for jean, from jeans. Such suits are rather intended for business meetings than weddings. And shirt for the evening. The shirt must be smooth and white and the collar is best to be buttoned. Even if you wear a suit in a color other than navy or black, it must remain white. Of course, a different white shirt because wedding the same uh, one to two weddings in one year would be slightly tasteless. How about three-piece suit with a waistcoat for a wedding? Can a wedding guest wear a waistcoat? Absolutely, it's a good choice. Both single and double-breasted waistcoats are suitable. A particularly interesting solution may be a waistcoat contrasting with the jacket and trousers. Fans of classic elegance often combine a light gray waistcoat with a navy suit, which looks uh, very impressive. A waistcoat can be also used in a coordinated set. A three-piece suit with a waistcoat is one of my suggestions 
for a wedding as a wedding guest. With a waistcoat on, you can confidently wear an unbuttoned jacket which increases comfort. The waistcoat also keeps the tie at the right position. However, remember that waistcoats are worn with trousers with suspenders. A belt protruding from under the waistcoat is a big mistake. Of course, I recommend button suspenders. It's a very stylish and comfortable solution. The trousers should be without belt loops, of course. Trousers and jacket in a different color, a coordinated set and uniform. In many situations, you can replace a suit with a coordinated set, a uh, man uniform. This means styling with a jacket and trousers in different colors. It's a less formal choice for an occasion like a wedding, but acceptable in today's times. Well, unless the bride and groom are your closest family, then you should stick to a suit. The most classic uh, man uniform uh, consists of navy jacket made of thin wool and grey trousers. It's called a club set in a few countries. In the summer you can also wear less formal light chinos with a darker jacket. Such a set is suitable for those who would like to dress more casually. Jeans would be unacceptable. Save them for a trip to the park with family. You'll learn more about uniforms in a different video of mine. Wedding shoes. The right type of footwear for a wedding. Etiquette dedicates that the best choice for such formal occasions will be black oxfords, called also balmorals. i uh, talk about them in my other video. Shoes should have the simplest form with minimal stitching and decoration. It's best if the vamp with eyelets for laces is close at the bottom, just like in Oxfords. This gives the shoes a simpler, more elegant shape. In addition to Oxfords, whole cats are also acceptable. These are shoes made almost entirely of one piece of leather, characterized by a very minimalist form. They also have a closed vamp. In summer, you can wear classic elegant loafers, so-called penny loafers, bra, preferably those made of smooth leather. Suede should be too informal for such an occasion. Black shoes are considered best for formal occasions. They match well with navy and grey trousers, in example with the colors that are most often worn when attending a wedding. Brown shoes are a more risky choice and, according to some people, even inappropriate. On the other hand, if you already opt for a less formal set, for example, with beige, chinos or light grey trousers, then black shoes wouldn't match well. Brown would be a better choice then. Remember that shoes should be laced up in a ladder style. Laces then create aesthetic horizontal lines. Also, don't forget about careful polishing of the shoes. The toe caps and heels should thoroughly be polished, a bit of shine work can add sparkle to the entire outfit. Socks for wedding shoes. Socks should be color coordinated with shoes or trousers. Alternatively, you can let your imagination run wild and match the color of the socks to the tie or pocket square. They should be made of smooth material or with a delicate stripe pattern. If you opt for a pattern, make sure it's not too extravagant. Polka dot seem to be a good idea. Socks should be high. The point is that when sitting, no bare calf should be visible. To ensure that the socks stay in place all the time, you can invest in sock garters. The most stylish accessories of this type are produced by the British brand Albert Thurston, worn by Kings, President and of course Agent W7. Pocket square for a suit at the wedding. When it comes to choosing a pocket square, you can be a little extravagant. In many countries, men rarely remember about a pocket square, considering it too much extravagance. However, it's an integral element of classic elegance, sanctified by tradition. A pocket square can be a very interesting element of attire, adding the finishing touch to the entire look. If you're not sure how to fold it, just Google it. A good choice is always plain white pocket square, preferably linen because this slightly rough material stays in place in the pocket well and doesn't tuck inside as easily as silk. You can also opt for pocket squares with contrasting edges. A geometric or even slightly more complicated pattern would also not be a mistake. But try to make sure that the pocket square doesn't look too flashy. Leave the baldest ones for casual outings with friends. Remember to match the pocket square to the outfit, but uh, never choose one in the same color as the tie. It's just tacky. Shirt for a wedding, 
Certainly, men who wear short-sleeved shirts to a wedding cannot be called elegant. Those who sell such shirts as suits, shirts, should be punished somehow. Unfortunately, this trend at many weddings is still visible. An appropriate shirt for a wedding will be a long-sleeved one with button cuffs or cufflinks. A scholar classic white will be the most suitable, apart from the light blue and pink are also acceptable. You can also choose a fabric with a very delicate pattern like a small light check. Avoid shirts in flashy colors as well as those that are too dark or shiny. Fancy patterns are also not recommended. The shirt should be buttoned up all the way. A de deep neckline should be a domain of women, especially in formal situations. And never wear a shirt over trousers. It should always be tucked into the trousers, ironed and well fitted without hanging folds above the waistband. If your shirt is too wide at the waist, have it narrowed by a tailor. You pay a few bucks and the effect is worth it. Avoid short sleeve shirts like the black. Why? I already said that. If however you opt for a bow tie instead of a tie, the shirt should have a covered button placket. It's believed that shirt buttons are not something that should be exposed in a formal attire. Leave shirts with button down colors at home. Choose a classic or Italian color. Make sure that the color of the shirt fits nicely under the lapels of the jacket. Appropriate tie for a wedding. The last element of a attire for a wedding and reception is a tie or a bow tie. You can't come to this um, type of event with a bare neck. The tie for a wedding set should be solid colored or have a subtle pattern. It's best to choose subdued colors, blue, navy, burgundy, gray, bottle green. A bright tie is a mistake. And remember, don't choose a tie in the same color as the pocket square. You should also know not match the tie to your partner's dress. It's in poor taste. You're not twins whose mom buys them identical clothes. Your harmony with each other should consist of both of you being dressed at a similar level of formality. That's all. The most appropriate for a wedding will be a silk tie. For less formal sets, you can also wear ties made of other natural fabrics such as wool or cotton. Even less formal are knitted ties. In any case, forget about synthetics like polyester or microfiber. The tie should be an ornament, something made with skill and from good materials, not a cheap plastic imitation. If you still don't have a sense for it, check the composition on the label, because even in decent boutiques you can come across synthetics. Also, thin ties are not suitable for a wedding and reception. The tie should be roughly the same width as the lapels of the jacket. The most universal tie knot is the dynamic four in hand. It's easy to make and you can just check uh, how to do it on YouTube. Before you go to a wedding, let me remind you of the basic rules of wearing a jacket. When sitting, you should unbutton it. However, this rule does not apply to double-breasted jacket, which should be buttoned even when sitting. However, if you're wearing a waistcoat, you can wear an unbuttoned jacket even while standing. And one more note. There is no rule in any respected etiquette handbook that I sometimes hear about that after midnight at weddings you can take off your jacket. According to tradition, a gentleman in formal situations always wears a jacket. But don't worry, if the party is great, we can sometimes forget about these rules. Above all, let's celebrate this unique event. The stroke of midnight doesn't change much here. After seeing this video, Guide, you probably have no doubts that to the right attire you'll show proper respect to the young couple and in dozens of photos from the party you will see how great you looked. Make an effort for yourself and for others. After all, it's a shame to waste time on mediocrity.